in our new unit, we're going to start looking at what we call rational functions. Rational functions are going to be a function that has a polynomial on top and a polynomial on bottom. So essentially, they're going to look like a fraction. Um, first thing we're going to talk about is how we get them in simplest form. So these here are going to be our steps for simplest form. We're going to start by factoring both the numerator and the denominator. So notice factoring is never going away. Um, we're going to cancel any common factors that appear with multiplication. We can never, ever, ever cancel with adding and subtracting unless we factor out a GCF first and then cancel through that multiplication. Then we're going to state the domain. So when we state the domain, what we're going to look at is being sure to list anything that will make the denominator zero because as you have seen before, even though it's okay to have zero on top, no, it's not okay to have zero on the bottom. So we're going to list those as restrictions, very similar to what we did with the radical functions, how we said, well, I guess not as much. More with the radical function, we looked at um, describing a range of possible x values. Now we're going to kind of look at how x can be anything except specific numbers. Um, one thing to remind you of is that we have to look at the denominator before things were canceled out. So, um, and then I have it just listed here as steps if you don't like um, the flow map there. So let's go ahead and look. I have three examples on example one. First thing I'm going to do is factor. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that everyone's fairly fluent at factor sum tables since this is an objective that you've already mastered. If it's something you need to go back and review, please do. If you need to talk with me in class about where I'm coming up with these numbers, please do. But right away on top, I notice I have a trinomial. I have a coefficient of 1 on my x squared term. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find factors of 25 with a sum of 10. Well, I know that 5 times 5 is 25 and 5 plus 5 is 10. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the numerator of this expression as x plus 5 times x plus 5. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the bottom, but now I'm going to have factors of 20 with a sum of 9. So I know that 4 times 5 is 20 and 4 plus 5 is 9. So I'm going to rewrite that as x plus 5 times x plus 4. Next thing I'm going to do is reduce. Since I'm going to have to state my domain restriction, restrictions um, from the denominator before things are canceled, right here I'm going to go ahead and ask myself, what are my domain restrictions? What can x not be? Well, I know that x can't be any value that's going to make x plus 5 times x plus 4 equal to 0. It cannot be 0. Well, I know that when I have two things multiplying to be 0, the zero product, pro zero product property tells me that either x plus 5 cannot be 0 or x plus 4 cannot be 0. Solving those, I come up with a domain of all possible x values except x cannot be negative 5 because looking here, if I were to subtract 5, that would be solving for x. And x cannot equal negative 4 because, again, if I were to solve this, I would have to subtract 4 to get x by itself. So notice it may not be a bad idea to swap 2 and 3 up here or 2 and 3 right here. Oh, and I did right here. So I'm listing the domain and then I'm canceling. Um, now from here, I'm going to go ahead and cancel my x plus 5. And that's going to leave me the simplest form of x plus 5 over x plus 4. So here's my simplest form, and here is my domain. Looking at the second example, I'm going to go through the exact same steps. So notice on this one, I see right away on top I have a GCF of 3. So I'm going to go ahead and take that GCF out. Doing so leaves me with 2 minus x. Once again on the bottom I have a trinomial that starts with x squared so I can go ahead and use my factor sum tables. So I'm going to do factors of 8 with a sum of negative 6. Well I know that negative 4 times negative 2 is 8 and negative 4 plus negative 2 is negative 6. So I'm going to go ahead and say that factors to be x minus 4 times x minus 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and take care of my domain. So I cannot let the bottom be 0. So that tells me that x minus 4 times x minus 2 cannot be 0. 
So according to the zero product property, that tells me that either x minus 4 cannot be zero or x minus 2 cannot be zero. Solving each of those, I end up with a domain of all x values except x cannot be 4 since that would put a zero in the denominator and x cannot be 2 since that would put a zero in the denominator as well. Now I'm ready to go ahead and check to see if I can reduce. Well I see that this factor here and this factor here are very close. The difference is, is that here I have a positive 2 and a negative x, here I have a positive x and a negative 2, so I can go ahead and say that these are opposites. Well, I know if I were to factor a negative 1 out of this top term, I would be left with a negative 2 and a positive x, and these would no longer be opposites and I could cancel. So I am going to go ahead and take another factoring step. Instead of having a 3 out front, I'm going to say I have a negative 3 out front and a negative 2 plus x, and on the bottom, an x minus 4 and an x minus 2. While these may not look exactly the same, I know from the commutative property it doesn't matter what order I add in, so I do know that these are the exact same expression because this is the same thing as x minus 2, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel those. When those cancel out, I'm left with my simplest form, which is just negative 3 over x minus 4. So I reroute it in simplest form, and I've also stated my domain. Looking at one final example, this is a good one for you to pause and go ahead and try on your own. So this one looks a little bit different. This actually um, is a little bit more basic on the previous ones we had binomials and trinomials. Notice on this one I just have a monomial on top and a not monomial on the bottom. So here this is very similar to what we did in the previous unit when we um, simplified first or when we simplified with um, exponents. So notice on this one all I really need to do is say negative 27 and 9 can both be divided by 9 leaving me a negative 3 and a 1. x cubed and x to the fourth can both be divided by x cubed leaving me with an x on the bottom and my y's cancel out completely so I just have negative 3 over x. So I didn't realize that was a pretty basic example there. Um, but that's it. So the big ones are the ones from the previous page. Make sure that you are factoring, um, you are stating your domain, and um, putting it in simplest form. And before I end this video, I just want to make sure and state my domain for this function here. Notice my domain would tell me that 9x to the fourth times y cannot equal 0. These are all multiplying, so 9 cannot be 0. I know that never happens. x to the 4th cannot be 0. Taking the 4th root, that tells me that x cannot be 0, and um, y cannot be 0. So here are going to be my domain restrictions.